Hey everyone, this is Achu Tabava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we're going to take another look at Venus's conjunction with Pluto. Today I have a slightly different angle from which to approach this topic. Um, we're going to take a look at the charts of some famous people who were born with Venus conjoined with Pluto. And I'm also going to share with you a list that I've been keeping from all of the stories that you guys have been sharing of the kinds of secrets revealed during Venus's uh, conjunction with Pluto or people who have Venus Pluto aspects in their birth chart. So <laughs> I thought this would be kind of fun today. Um, remember first that um, Venus will conjoin with Pluto station retrograde, go back through the conjunction with Pluto. So we have a long way to go with this transit. That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Before I do that, I want to remind you guys, I am at now at 590 backers with 23 days left to go in my annual fundraiser. I want to thank you all for uh, donating. If you have already done so, thank you very much. Here is the Kickstarter. You can find the link in the comments of this video or in the comment section or in the description of the video. And you can go to the Kickstarter page and pitch in. We're trying to get to 1,367 backers to beat last year's record to do so by New Year's Eve. So. Um, we're quite a ways away still. We're about at the halfway point and um, just a little bit ahead of last year's pace. So um, things tend to pick up the last couple of weeks uh, right before the end, uh, but we don't have to wait till the end. <laughs> so <laughs> selfishly, I'm like, don't make me wait till the end to try to beat the record. But um, when you donate, you can pick up a variety of lectures, including the Astrology of 2022 video. It's a deep dive that I uh, do into all of the astrology of 2022. It comes with a calendar that uh, you can track and that I use on this channel throughout the year. So you can kind of anticipate what I'm going to be talking about, what we'll be going into, what dates important things are happening, as well as a video unpacking it all. That's when you pledge $50 or more. Um, and there's lots of other exclusive lectures. There's a year ahead horoscope reading for your sun or rising sign that goes into all of that astrology based on uh, whatever your sun or rising sign is, if you, you can choose one. And um, also there's horary questions available. And then the best deal, of course, is attending one of my online classes. If you pledge $900, you can um, take any of my courses uh, and that's going to be $400 cheaper than the early bird rate and 50% off from the normal tuition. If you pledge $1,700 or more, you can pick two classes. And so the savings keeps going up. The price goes down. If you attend three or four, the price goes down even more. So if you're someone who knows that they would like to study with me, the good thing about these is that um, you can bundle them together and use them whenever you want just any time after two, January 1st, 2022. We have the Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic Hellenistic course. It starts in June and November. So you can start with either of those cohorts. And um, we also have the year two program and the horary program starting in June of 2022. And the readings and passages program that starts in the fall. So there's four years worth of amazing curriculum with staff of tutors, breakout study sessions, um, tons of bonus material, live webinars, um, live clients, all sorts of stuff that we do to try to equip you for reading charts for other people or taking your own personal practice and love of astrology to another level. So um, thank you all for supporting this channel. Uh, this is my heartbeat. Every day I get up, I do my prayer, my meditation, I study, I prepare my notes, I try to come up with fun things, new series, um, and had a lot of good times with you guys in 2021, thanks to your generous support last year. So hopefully this year we can get your support as well. Um, and if you can't donate, we appreciate your prayers. We appreciate likes and subscribes and clicking notification bells and sharing my work with other people. It really helps. I remember that um, the funds from this also go to a variety of really good causes. Yesterday, we donated $5,108 of the Kickstarter funds raised already to distributing um, copies of the Bhagavad Gita in prisons, hospitals, and hospice care centers. And so we're always trying to find ways of giving back in service, some good karma yoga to do with the funds 
that we raise. We're building a community herbal medicine garden on about an acre of land that we have. That'll be used to make herbal medicine and to give it to people who could not afford herbal medicine. So we try to do lots of good things. We're also moving toward building a donation-based reading clinic either in 2022 or three. Not sure how long it'll take, but hopefully by early 2023 at the latest. At any rate, um, so you're supporting good stuff. You're supporting a staff of people. You're supporting me and my family. So if you like this channel, please consider pitching in. All right. So let's take a look at Venus's conjunction with Pluto on the real-time clock. Then I'm going to go into some, some fun examples that I've come up with today. Celebrities and secrets. <laughs> so, all right. So we have <clears throat> Venus conjoining Pluto in Capricorn and watch how long it's going to be here. So you can see um, those two planets get together exactly Friday into Saturday. And then um, they're going to spend a, a lot of time together because Venus is slowing down to station. So you can see Venus is just about a degree off from Pluto by December 17th, stations and turns retrograde by the 20th, and then is going back through the retrograde into a conjunction with Pluto on Christmas. And then Venus and Mercury are going to conjoin as Mercury goes through conjunction with Pluto as well. And we have basically Venus, Pluto, and Mercury all together at the end of the year. Now remember, as that's happening, you also have Saturn and Uranus going through their square right around the holidays as well. So action-packed sequence, and we're taking another look today at Venus and Pluto. So first, I want to give you a list of people. I just picked a seven people. I did a quick scan. This was not like hours and hours of research, but I did a scan of celebrities who were born with Venus-Pluto conjunction within less than a degree. And um, what are their stories and how do they resemble the Venus Pluto? Now their stories are a whole lifetime, right? So I, mean, I can't possibly, I don't know these people. I can only capture things that were in the news or that everyone sort of knows about them. Uh, so Nancy Kerrigan, famous figure skater was born with Venus conjoined with Pluto. And you guys may remember that she was assaulted by a competitive jealous um, uh, colleague figure skater. I'm trying to remember Tanya Harding, I think was her name. And um, it really resembles the Venus Pluto dynamic. First of all, Venus Pluto can represent power, uh, doing something or related to something Venusian. So here's a figure skater, it's an art form of a kind that becomes is very, very famous and powerful. And also, suffers an attack from a jealous Venusian figure of a fellow figure skater. That's a very Venus Pluto like dynamic. How about Wes Craven? I don't know if you guys know who Wes Craven is, but famous, uh, famous film director who makes art, but what kind? Horror movies. So you have that suspense, horror, guts, blood, but Hollywood. So Wes Craven, uh, on an artist of gore. <laughs> so horror and suspense. Very fitting for Venus-Pluto dynamic. <clears throat> How about Emile Durkheim? I don't know if you guys know Emile Durkheim. I had to read him in when I was in graduate school. Um, a famous sociologist, one of the famous like early sociologists who was doing a lot to establish sociology as a field. And as a field apart from religion or psychology, uh, Venus, of course, is, you could say, intimately related to sociology insofar as Venus uh, represents people and relationships. And so here you have someone looking at the underlying um, structures of, of power and deeper and heavier topics. His first thing that he ever wrote, I forget the name of it, but it was, um, it was on it was a study of suicide within religious communities. So he had this way of, in his, you know, in his own his own way, in his own day, of looking at taboo subject matters like suicide in the in the church. Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner was said to be the world's wealthiest model by Forbes magazine or something like that at one point. Obviously, she runs with powerful people, fashion, money, uh, wealth. Um, in, in the fashion world. So she's a fashion 
icon, a social, a socialite. Is that the name that they call that they say? I think she was first on, I never saw this show, but I've of course heard all about it. It was called something about the keeping up with the Kardashians. I think it's called and uh, never saw it, but know that it was also, uh, you know, a, a show that kind of, I kind of, kind of an iconic cultural show and uh, came into, of course, um, her, um, her experience in that world, I just imagine would involve a whole lot about sex, money, power, and so forth. And of course, um, I'm forgetting the name of her parent who had the transition. Um, originally, what his name was before she, she transitioned. I'm trying to remember Jenner. What was the um, so Caitlyn Jenner, who was uh, prior to transitioning, was Bruce Jenner, the retired Olympic gold gold medal winning decathlete. Sorry, I had to look it up. So before Caitlyn transitioned um, and was an Olympic gold win, a gold gold medal winning athlete, and then transitioned. So that's one of your parents growing up. If you're Kendall Jenner, you have a parent that makes a transition. And um, the Venus-Pluto dynamic actually coincides perfectly with that kind of transformation of identity or gender. And um, I apologize if I didn't uh, land my, my pronouns correctly in, um, in talking about that. Let's see, Zac Efron, who is taught, he, he was on Baywatch and was like a teenage sex icon, right? very famous for being this one of the sexiest men alive and so forth at one point his career um tanked tremendously because of substance abuse issues that he had to deal with so here and that's a very common theme where there'll be like you're li you're living in the glory of like um powerful people money uh se sexual appeal etc but then there's like there will be like this deep dark heavy stuff that comes with it that's the plutonian part of it and for zach efron apparently substance abuse was a real issue for a little while you see something similar with jenny mccarthy here's someone who was like uh i think she pretty much got her career start this is another venus pluto dynamic career start with venus and pluto um as Playmate of the Year or something like that and Playboy magazine, but she was a TV star and, you know, movie star and did a lot of things, but a sex icon, a fashion icon of, of you know, this, this person who has this tremendously powerful Venusian appeal and is culturally iconic in that way, but also um, spoke out about taboo subjects socially. Uh, her, I think it was her son that developed autism and she believed that it was due to vaccination and so she became someone who started speaking out about delayed or slowed down vaccination schedules for children um, of course a lot of people thought she was crazy for that i'm not here to tell you what is right or not about vaccines but that's something that of course is very in line with the venus pluto dynamic where it's something very provocative and um perhaps perhaps socially taboo like you imagine, you know, it's and it's such a contrast with at the same exact time with like the the playmate status that this this super like gravitational pull because of how attractive a person is or how powerful or beautiful or successful. And there's that kind of Venusian aura around it. But then there's like taboo and like really um like issue, like sort of subterranean issues that come up that make a person really controversial. I mean, you can imagine similarly, Kendall Jenner and what she's the kind of world that one might inhabit, right? Where there, there's things like power, wealth, greed, lawsuits, um, and and um, and of course, like also, um, you you can think of, and this is like the same thing for, for example, Emil Durkheim, like. Well, let's look at suicide in the church or something like that. So you got this like potential for the goddess to be on full display, but then there's these uh, just 
potential heavier, darker, more taboo themes that somehow surround the goddess at the same time. Frida Kahlo was another person who had Venus and Pluto conjoined within a degree. Here's an artist who looked particularly at, first of all, she's an amazingly famous artist, so a Venusian icon, again, but looks at things like pain, race, identity, class, post-colonialism, gender. So she's looking at all of these topics, and a lot of them are taboo, they're heavy, they're dark, they're subterranean, um, there's sickness, there's love, there's a, I think it was her, I think her husband had affairs, and I mean, it, it's, um, she is such a great example of Venus Pluto in the sense of the combination of Venusian beauty and Plutonian depth and complications and stuff like that. So um, all of which can, I, I don't believe when I say these things about Pluto, I'm not trying to cast Pluto in an evil or dark or bad light either. They're just, they're, it's just not the easy stuff that you would typically associate with Venus. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know much about a lot of these people, but um, there's there's always going to be some complication for Venus. She can't, Venus can't just go on being like, oh, I'm the goddess and everything is beautiful. And it's not like, it's not like, it's, 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 it's more like Scorpio, right? If you had to put it that way and less like Taurus, this kind of Venus because of that depth and intensity and the, the primordial, um, power of Pluto that's behind it. It ma makes you look at heavy, deep things, uh, transgender, suicide in the church, someone, a, a colleague attacking you in the figure skating world, horror movies, right? There, it has that, but then there, there's, um, you know, famous art, uh, famous intellectual work, a famous figure skater. You see what I mean? So it's a powerful pairing when you put them together. Now, this is just for fun. <laughs> I collected um, both from my archives over the years of what I've heard and seen in, cl in clients, as well as what you guys have been sending in using the hashtag grabbed. People who were born with Venus Pluto. During a Venus Pluto transit, or at one point during life, Venus Pluto is activated, or during a transit such as this one, these are things that people have found out. I found out these are all things that I have uh, collected from you guys uh, and a few from my own practice. I found out during Venus Pluto that my husband was gay. And this person said that it ended up being a very supportive, healthy process, but they separated or divorced. <clears throat> Number two, I found out that while my son was at college, he was dressing as a woman and thinking of transitioning. She didn't say if uh, her son did transition or not, but that's what this mother said. Number three, I found out that my friend got breast implants. And this is someone that, that this just happened to this week. <laughs> it's very Venus Pluto. Venus represents women, sisters, and friendships generally. <laughs> I think that was funny. Uh, number four, someone at work who I went out with regularly for lunch every day for years was trying to get me fired. That's intense. <laughs> That's so intense. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, another one, number five, I found out that I have a stalker. Uh, these are things, again, that I'm, I'm phrasing in this way, but it could be that they had a Venus Pluto transit in their chart. This is something they found out that they're attributing to Venus Pluto in their chart or during this current transit or previous Venus Pluto transit. Number six, I just found out that I could have orgasms and that I actually enjoy them. Oh, good. Yay. Good for you. <laughs> so, um, I thought this one was great. I got terrible food poisoning from a high scale restaurant that I had been bragging to my friends about going to with a date. So Apparently, this person had been bragging on and on about how this date was going to take them to this very high scale, upscale restaurant. They went to the restaurant and got food poisoning as Venus is coming together with Pluto this week. So that was, that was a big one. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is someone who dealt with this natally spouse. They found out uh, long, this, as far as I could tell, this will sound like um, this was their only spouse. My, I found out that my spouse was addicted to pornography 
and it was the beginning of the end of their marriage. Um, number nine, I found out that my husband was sexually assaulted as a child and never told me. Yeah, see, these are all Venus-Pluto dynamics. Um, my child is becoming sexual and is only 14. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I, I mean, I think back, I was about 15, I guess, when, you know, I started dating and exploring all that stuff. I don't know how old you guys were, but I, don't, I would just say like, you know, be, try to be a good parent. But I, I think it's probably pretty common once kids get into their teen years that they might start exploring a little bit. Um, hopefully it's all healthy. But I mean, yeah, that's a big deal. I can't even imagine now that I am a parent of two girls. Like I just, that worries me. So <laughs> anyway, uh, number 11, I found out that my boss was sleeping with our office manager. Mm, there's a Venus Pluto story for you. And number 12, I found out that my son had a stash of dirty magazines. <laughs> well, are they dirty? Are they? I don't know. N your words, not mine. So at any rate, um, but still, you don't want, I don't, I mean, you certainly don't want your son getting into a pathway of objectifying women or something like that. So I, I could understand why a parent might be concerned, but yeah, these taboo subjects, exploring sexuality, gender, um, also Venus Pluto is like powerful women and feminism, aspects of feminism and things like that. So um, these are all themes that can come on really strong in the next couple of weeks as Venus is conjoining with Pluto. So watch for them and see what you notice. And if you have a story, Use the hashtag grabbed and put your story into the chat box where I can see it and maybe use it for a future episode. Thank you guys for sharing some of these already. I was surprised at the reason that I chose this format of things that were revealed is because that's what everyone wrote in with. It was like, oh, I found out about this. Oh, I found out about that. I was like, wow, okay. So a few of those I added in from things that I've seen in my practice too. Um, but the things that get shown to us that get revealed uh, are oftentimes very healing. You know, a lot of how much repression is there around Venus in our world? You know, how much repression is there around our bodies, our gender, our, uh, how much, how much oppression do we face in just letting our bodies be themselves? Um, I want to read you guys something to close with today. And this is one of my, um, this is one of my favorite poems. And I think it fits for Venus and Pluto. Um, because another thing that I think about generally is uh, with Venus Pluto is the empowerment that we may need to feel in touch with our instinctual body, our earthly form. And what is the right way of connecting with that versus what is an unhealthy way? How can we acknowledge the desire body without going into a space that's destructive to ourselves or others? I'm going to read you a poem. It's one of my favorite It's poems. It's called Wild Geese, and it's by Mary Oliver, who is uh, a poet that I love very much. And um, I can't remember what the Venus-Pluto contact was in her chart, or it may have been Venus-Neptune. She's kind of like a transcendental uh, poet. I believe she was a lesbian, though I can't remember correctly. But she's um, fantastic at talking about nature and beauty and that which is sort of taboo about it. Um, it was one of the themes of her work that I love the most. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're all part of nature. We're not apart from it as humans. Sometimes it can feel like it, but here she says, this is wild geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting. 
over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. All right, that's what I've got for today. I hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.